Go ahead and find your way to the book of Ezekiel right now, the book of Ezekiel in chapter 47. I'm going to disappoint all of you today because I'm going to carry you swimming. How many wants to go swimming today? How many of you want to burn up in the heat? How many want to go swimming today? Come on, church. <laughs> Woo! There ain't nothing. I want you to picture right now. Picture yourself on the beach. Now, you see, you started out in the parking lot. You started out in the parking lot, and it was an asphalt parking lot, and, 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 it, and it was about 105 degrees, and, and you forgot your flip-flops. You forgot your tennis shoes, and you're barefooted, and you're standing out there on that asphalt, and, and as you step out of the door of the vehicle, and that salt breeze just, man, it just hits your nostrils. Say, so I see some of you watering it in the mouth right now. Pam over here is finna run out the door and head to Fernandina. <laughs> Y'all catch her before she gets too far. And, and you step on that concrete, that asphalt, and it's, it's burning up. And Y'all know how you do. <laughs> ooh -hoo -hoo. Oh, y'all hurry up. Come on, we got to go. And you, and you start and you get faster and faster as you go across the asphalt. And then you get out on that. You think you're home whenever you hit the sand. But you see, it's the same temperature as well. And, and you told your wife to put your flip flaps in the trunk of the car. Amen. And, and she forgot. Yeah, y'all. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yeah. She forgot because she wanted to see you burn your paws up. And you're running on that sand, and whoo, Lord, and you, some of you's even cussing probably. <laughs> and, and man, you just can't hardly stand it. And then all of a sudden, you, you run off that sand to where it's wet, and you run out there about ankle deep, and ah, oh, whoo. So you ain't going no further because Moby Dick's out there, the sharks is out there. <laughs> Y'all bunch of scaredy cats. I ain't going out there. I can't see. I'm not going to go anywhere that I can't see the bottom. I am not going anywhere where I can't see the bottom. This is as far as I'm going. And whoo, thank you, Jesus, for this ankle deep water. Ah. How many of you is going to leave after church and go to the beach? <laughs> how many of you want to? But how many is going to go? The devil is a lie. He's not without me. Oh, my goodness. Let's go swimming. See, I'm not satisfied just getting my ankles wet. I, I'm not satisfied with just getting my feet cooled off. Because, you know, that heat, it went from the bottom of my paws, your paws, your feet, whatever you want to call them, and, it, and that heat rose up, and, and it got your legs hot, and it got you... you started sweating on your chest and man it looked like a waterfall coming out from under your armpits and, and your head's just drenched I mean you gotta clear off your glasses and all that stuff you burning up but you standing there in that ankle deep water oh Lord thank you for that my feet is cooled off but my head is burning up and I ain't going to feed no sharks today verse 1 the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple and I saw water coming from under the threshold of the temple towards the east from the temple uh, face to east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and let me, uh, led me around outside the outer gate facing east. And the water was flowing from the south side. And as the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits, which is about 1,500 feet. And then he led me through the water that was ankle deep. Then he measured off another thousand cubits, 1,500 feet, and led me through the water that was knee deep. And he measured off another thousand and led me through the water that was up to the waist. And he measured off another thousand, 1,500, and it was a river 
that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in. A river that no one could cross. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? Lord, I can't help but see this. I started off with my knees, I meant my ankles, and then I got to my knees and my waist, and now you carry me out here where I got to swim. I I can't help, I I have to see this. Do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah. Where it enters the sea. When it enters into the sea, the water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large number of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore from the Engedi into the Ingalim. And there will be places for spreading nets and the fish will be of many kinds like the fresh of the great fish of the great sea. But the swamps and the marshes will not because fresh, will not become fresh. It will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow upon, uh, grow up on both sides, on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither nor will their fruit fall. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. God, this word, so many meanings, so much power, God, so much spirit that we need today out of this scripture. I beg you right now, Father God, with my hands held to the kingdom, carry us swimming. Carry us swimming, Father, in your sweet name, Jesus, and amen. See, we're all leaving the sanctuary, and we're going down to Fernandina right now. And when I count to three, one, two, three, we're all on the beach. Well, I'm good, ain't I? Some of y'all saying, carry me back to Fitzgerald. You back in Fitzgerald, okay. You there. You just went out of this parking lot that was so hot. You went across this beach that was so hot. And now you've walked out into the water about ankle deep. Man, just as soon as that water hits your feet and your ankles, boy, oh my, it put a feeling on you. I mean, it just soothed your soul. You, you, you all of a sudden start, you all of a sudden start cooling down. And, and things start slowing down. Your heart was racing and your nerves was just crazy. But now that you're relaxed because, you know what, here you are, you're standing in that water. And, and what I want us to get out of this today is where he's showing the ankle deep. And there's four areas, there's four deeps. That's ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep, and then swimming in the river. And each depth has got a place that it's going to carry us. But God starts out in the scripture. God gives us the the picture here as we look at the ankle deep water. What is the ankle deep water? What does that represent? What it represents today, church, is the fact that that ankle is connected to the foot. In other words, what is the foot? You know, without your feet, you don't have any foundation. But, but, but because you got your foot there, that is our foundation. And God's saying, you know what? I'm carrying you out to where you got a foundation. I'm carrying you away from where you are in your life. And I want you to walk out here, Ezekiel. And he carried him out. And he says, right here, this is the beginning. This is the beginning of what I got in store for you and all the children to come. I want you to have a foundation. We all got a have a foundation church and our foundation is in God almighty in his son Jesus Christ oh but see you know what there's more than just having a foundation you know if we don't have that foundation then he says build your rock build your house upon the rock and you know if you build it in the sand in the sand and it's going to seep out from under and it's going to fall but if you build it upon the rock and build a good foundation and God today wants me and you to have a good foundation in the name of Jesus Christ somebody better say somebody need to stand up and run around and woo I'm hey I got me a foundation I know that my house is upon the rock I know that I got me a good foundation And the devil may come and he may swat at me, but he ain't going to knock me off my foundation because I'm rooted in the name of Jesus Christ. 
So in other words, God's saying today, you need a foundation. You need a good foundation. And you're not going to get it out here in the world. You're not going to get it in drugs, alcohol. You're not going to get it in sex. You're not going to get it in lying. You're not going to get it in cheating. You're not going to get it in all these other things. You're, anything that the world has got to offer you is not a foundation that's going to keep you stable. When the wind blows, it will not knock you down. The foundation that God wants me you to have today is a foundation in the God Almighty. See where this water came from? It was coming from the temple. It was flowing from the temple of God. And in Revelations, and you know, we studied Revelations in chapter 22. It talks about the water that was flowed out of the temple of God. It ever was, you know, when God's flowing through might in your life, when God's really moving in might in your life, then you know what? We got a foundation with God. Somebody give God some glory. We got a foundation. Now that we've built that foundation, and I beg you this morning with my hands held to God, if you don't have your foundation built in God, make sure today that you don't leave here, that you get your foundation in the name of Jesus. But he measured off another 1,500 feet. And he carried him on out a little bit further. And he got him out there to where he was about knee deep. And see, he just built us a foundation. We got a good foundation. We can stand on our own two feet now. We can stand on our own two feet. And he says, don't stay on the milk, but get on the meat. And you see, when we get that foundation, then we can move a little bit further now. We grow more in Christ. And he carried him out to where it was knee deep. And what does the knees do? The knees is what bends. You know what? If you don't have good foundation... And if you don't bend your knees, you're not going very far. So God's showing him about knee deep. You know, this is kind of the mid-level of, of our lower part of our body. When our knees bends, that means we get to walking. And when we can walk, now that's what God's saying. Hey, now that you got a foundation in me, I'm ready to walk with you. And I'm ready for you to walk with me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We got to walk with God. And God said, now that you built that foundation, now me and you can walk together. And if you're here today and you want that walk with God, build that foundation and just let your knees bend and you start walking with God. You see, when your knees go out, you ain't going very far. When your knees get weak, you ain't going very far. When your knees wear out, you ain't going very far. So God is saying, stay in there with me. Hold right in here with me. Stay in the rooted foundation at ankle deep and just start walking with me and I'll start walking with you and I will empower you and you will have everything. Every, I will supply your needs, church. I'll supply your needs. I'll give you everything that you need. All I got to do is just walk with me. You see, when everyone who went by the word, oh my goodness. You see, Jesus walked along the seaside a lot. He loved the ocean just as much as anybody else. He made it. But as he started walking along the seaside, and here's that indication of Peter and John and a lot of other disciples he picked him up on the seaside and he says, leave everything behind and come and follow me. You see, Wesley, we need to bend at the knees and we need to follow Jesus. We need to follow him and let him direct our pathway, direct the way that we go. But see, he just, just, wasn't, he just don't want us to follow him. There's more to it than just following. Okay, I go to church every Sunday. Preacher, I'm here every day. The doors is open. Preacher, I give my tithes to the church every Sunday. Preacher, but I'll tell you today, there's more to it than showing up at church. There's more to it than putting money in the basket. You got to have a relationship and the only to have a relationship is to walk with God. To walk with God. I know they're probably getting tired on the cameras of following me around everywhere, but that's all right. If you lose me, you lose me. It'll be good. You see, we got to walk with God. God wants to walk with us. So he's not just settled with me and you walking with him. He wants to do more. And so you're getting a little bit out of your comfort zone now. Because you're getting out here, you're at knee deep, and you know, the further you go out, the deeper it's going to get, but also, I can't see the bottom. And if I can't see the bottom, I don't know what's down there. They may be alligators down there. They may be sharks down there. They could be anything down there. 
I can tell you who's down there. Jesus. Jesus is down there. He says, come on, Ezekiel, I want you to go another 1,500 feet. And he carries him out to about waist deep. Oh, this is where it get good, church. It gets good right along in here when you get waist deep. Now, oh, you're just splashing and having a good time as you're playing on the, uh, in the water there and, and the waves come and they beat you up and they pick you up and they set you back down. But you're in waist deep water. Uh, but you, you know, here you've taken a little, you have little less control. You're a little further from the predator, but you're a little bit closer to the predator killer. Jesus Christ Almighty himself. But you see this spot where he's showing us here about waist deep water. This is about our mid. This is about our midsection. What happens in our midsection? The midsection of our body is where life begins, church. That's where life begins. That's where, that's where the lady carries the baby. And, and I don't have to, we don't have to have one-on-one -on -one education on all that, do we? Somebody else have to teach it. It's where life begins. It's where life is at. It's in our midsection. It's our life. So he said here, hey, now you can have life with me. You've trusted me more than you did when you was up there with just getting your ankles wet. You've trusted me more now. Now I've carried you out to waste deep water. And now you don't have quite as much control. But you can go back if you want to. Boy, you can, you can continue to stay here. Or, or you can... Go a little bit further. Now there's some that's been in the churches. I'm just not talking about this church, but I'm talking about church in general. There's some people that's, that in their Holy Spirit, in their walk with God, they're just satisfied standing there in ankle deep water. You see, when you're in ankle deep water, there's not as, you don't have to do as much. You don't have to pray as much. You don't have to read your Bible as much. You don't have to, you don't have to forgive and forget as much. You don't have to do as much for God. In other words, the Holy Spirit's not working as much as it can in your lives. You get to knee deep. Well, I'll, I'll do a little bit more. Get to waist deep. Yeah, I, I, I'm right here. But see, God's not satisfied keeping us there. Even though now we got a good foundation and we've walked with God and now we're at that spot where we're living for God because life is at about a waist deep in our lives. We got a foundation, we're walking, and now we're living. But you see, God wants us to do more than just live, church. He wants us to do more than just live. There's more that He's got for me and you, church. And, and if the Holy Spirit has got more for me, you know what? I want more of it, church. I, oh Lord, I just want more of it. I, I can't get enough of God. I can't do enough for God. I can't love God enough. I just cannot love Him enough because I know all the depths that He loves. Ooh, that He loves me. Man, He says, Rex, I want to carry you to one other spot. I want to carry you to this other spot. Measures off another 1,500 feet. Then he led me. He measured off another 1,000. Measured off another, another 1,000. You see, this was a river. This is a river. This is that spot now. It's a river. This is the place where you got to swim. God has now got full control. And he says this, this is the spot where you've totally surrendered to me. This is where I've totally got you. This is where you totally depend on me at. You see, I've got, taken away your foundation. You don't have to worry about walking with me. And you don't have to worry about living with me because I got you. I got you. I got you in my arms. Now you're depending on me and you depend on everything of your life on me. You're not on that ground to where because I am your foundation. I am your walk. I am your life. I am everything that you need. I'm everything that you need now. And as that water flowed, 
And as that water flowed, there's another picture that I want me and you to get right quick. There's another, they see there's something else here. There's something else here. And this is for the church today. I'm talking about church in general. This is the part. He says that that water, that river, that it flowed. And it flowed. And, and we know that the depths and the hardest current is out in the middle and in the center. And he said as that river flowed, it flowed. It flowed right on out until it met the salt water. Church, when it met the salt water, that, that fresh water turned that old bitter salty water and made it refreshed again, church. And that's where God has got me and you today. He says if you'll get a foundation with me and if you'll walk with me and you'll live for me and I'll carry you out to where I can refresh your life. I can put another spirit in you. I can put another life in you. I can make you, I can make all those sins that's in your life go away. I can make you refreshed again. Anybody here want to be refreshed today? Anybody here want a fresh walk with God? Anybody want a fresh life with God today? Oh, my Lord, church. Huh? This is where God's wanting to carry me and you. It starts with a foundation. Then it starts walking with God. It starts living for God. And then when God's got us living for Him, He carries us and He says as it flowed in there, you know what? Oh, that's where all the fish gathered up. That's where all the creatures of the sea came because now that freshness was there and it was plentiful. There was plenty to eat. There was plenty of, of great food. There was plenty in their life. And God wants to me and you, oh, Lord, you're, woo, God wants me and you to have, don't make me say it, God wants me and you to have plenty. He said, I come to make your life abundantly. Abundant. God's got more and more for me and you, church. But it's up to you. It's up to us individually whether if we want to stay on the bank or if we want to go swimming. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm telling you, my body is burning up when I'm standing in ankle deep water. My body is still burning up when I'm in knee deep water. My body is still burning up when I'm in waist deep water. But I get cooled off is when I dive right on out into the deep and I go under and I'm ready to go under for God today I'm ready for you to go under for God today I'm ready for you to be empowered by the Holy Spirit today I want God to give you more he says I'll give you that freshness of life and if you need that freshness of life get down here to this altar and meet me at this altar today because God wants to make your life fresh if anybody's struggling is anybody really having a hard time? Is anybody, you know, you just, you just can't, you just, it's just tough for you. You, you really, you really don't, you mean, are you having problems still living in the world and still trying to live for God? Meet me at this altar as the band comes this morning. God wants to take you and he showed us the four depths and each depth has got a meaning. First of all, how do you start? How, preacher, how can, I, how can I have that today? How can I have that feeling today? First, start with a foundation. Start with a foundation with God today. And then once you start with that foundation, then start your life while walking with God. And then once you start walking with God, then you, gotta, you, then you, you start living for God. And then once you start living for God... You're out swimming. And you're just swimming. You're swimming. Oh, everybody look at that screen. That's you running out. Running out into the deep. You see them that's way out yonder? That's you. Those that's way out there, they, they out there where they can't touch the bottom. And, and, and they're out there and they just swimming. God, I want to go swimming with you today. As you stand to your feet this morning, I beg you with all my mind, heart, soul, and strength. Do you want to really go and swim for God? Do you want to go out to the depths? Start with your foundation. Walk with God. Live for God. And then let Him carry you on out to where it's nothing but you and God. You and God. Father, you know the hearts this morning. You know what it is, Father. God, you know what each and every one needs. 
Father, we just move shame out of the way this morning. We move bitterness out of the way this morning. We move disappointment out of the way this morning. God, we're here today to start with that foundation. And we move on up. We start walking. We start living. Today, God, let us totally surrender to you. Every head bow, every eye bow closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Today, do you need that foundation? Do you really need the foundation in God? Just raise your hand one second. If you need the foundation, thank you, Jesus. You can lower your hands. Now, if you just got the foundation, but you really need to walk with God, if you want to just truly walk with God today, just raise your hand. If you want to walk with God today, raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. You can lower your hands. Now, if you want to start living for God, if you want to start living for God, you want to go out to the depths where you start living for God, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can lower your hands. Now, if you want to be all in, you want to be total in control with God in your life, God having full control of your life, raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. You can lower your hands. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you feel God speaking to you today, if you feel God right now and you want to accept Him as your Lord and Savior, you want to admit that you're a sinner, that you fell short, and you've sinned, but you want to repent of those sins and say, God, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I want to live for you. I accept your Son, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. If you've never did that and you want to do that this morning, just raise your hand. you need a special prayer if you need a special prayer you need anointing this morning meet me at this altar and come and stand with me at this altar and let me pray for you whatever your need is make sure you get to this altar today God is here are you going to stay on the bank or are you going to go swimming everybody make your move on three one two three make your move let's go